Hello! This tutorial is based on the Allegro from the third movement of the Concerto in G, Opus 34 by Oscar Reading. Um, we have done pieces before by Reading uh, at String Orchestra. Uh, we did the D major concertino. Um, there is lots of absolutely beautiful melodies um, in this. There's a, a major main theme in the major key and there's another theme in the minor key. Um, I want you to pay lots of attention to the bowing patterns. Now the bowing patterns basically will throw you out what you'll feel like is round the wrong way because it's uneven patterns. It's patterns of three bows across four quavers. So you're going to go sla, ring, se, pre, sla, ring, se, pre. So that's really important that you follow the bowing. So that's in the first full bar. Further on the next bar, you're going to have to slow the bow down. You've got to crotch it. And then jogging walk. So walk, jogging walk, and then slide across the bar. Okay, so the bow really slows there. So let's do the first phrase. Okay, so that's the first phrase. We're in G major, nice and friendly key signature there. Eh? There is no position changes in this piece, but I would like you to think about your dynamics. Um, so basically there's a lot more of that, that rhythm pattern, the bowing pattern. And change of dynamic there um, into quiet. So loads and loads of crescendos and decrescendos going on in there. So I'd really like you to feel that and either lean down into the string for the crescendos or release the pressure for when you to play quietly for the piano um, volume there. Um, after you finish that little phrase... Watch out for that one. That might be tricky to get the four notes in a bow. Um, you then go into your minor theme. And you're basically bowing in minims there. Stride, stride, skipping Coca-Cola. So nice big even bows there. bowing in minims, really nice smooth even bows. Now where it starts to change is down at bar 37. We're going back into the slurring separate, slurring separate rhythm. So. Okay with loads of accidentals. So you've got the slurring separate, slur slurring separate rhythm bowing pattern for two bars. Then it changes to string crossing slurs, even bows. Separate bows, and then into the slurring separate again. Slurring separate, slurring separate, slurring separate, slurring separate. Then even bows. string crossing. Now this is why I've set you this piece because I want you to be a lot more conscious of your bowing. So to be able to get your brain to engage between slurring separate, slurring separate and crossing over, crossing over, crossing over to, to change. It's changing about all the time so it's a brilliant test for the right hand and the brain. Um, so that little ending there, so we've got the last slurring separate, slurring separate, slurring separate, slurring separate, slurring separate, crossing over, crossing over, crossing over, walk, walk at 44, brings you back into the theme at 45. which we've heard at the very, very beginning. Now that just carries on doing that main theme. And 
until you reach 60. That's really a recap of what you had on the first page of the main theme. Um, and then it changes, it changes into an accented little uh, couple of bars where I want you to really lean into those notes that have got the accents. Back to slurring separate. Slurring separate, slurring separate, slurring, jumping, walk, and lean, lean, lean. Final scales. Slurring separate, slurring separate. This is different all in one bow. Now this next section is string crossing over all four strings of the violin. So you're going to have to think about your elbow height. And you're down the G string, it's high. So let's just do an open strings. So we're having a high elbow to a low elbow. As you get down onto E string. And you should do it the other way around. High elbow to low elbow. We need fingers in. So I think an ideal way to practice this is you can by all means just practice your G and your D, that's absolutely fine. What I want you to practice is going B to G. And then open, really open out your hand to the octave. Because at 70 it changes to an octave, so instead of at 69, change to octave at 70. Back to the B and G at 71. And the octave. And then you can add your open strings. Octave. Okay, so it's always about the elbow. Um, and then you've got that little last second last bar. You've got G, left and G, left and going slowly. And play that last note like you mean it gets the string, so. Okay, we want to have a big, big ending there. So I'm now going to put on um, an accompaniment just so you can feel what it's like with the piano because it really does bring the piece to life in this. So I'm going to give that a go, piano accompaniment. Okay, so I hope you enjoy learning this piece. 
Obviously, take it really slowly at the beginning. Get your head round where the bowing patterns are that I discussed earlier on in the video. Troubleshoot, go to the end, do your over the four string crossings. Look at any um, string crossing excerpt, any scales that are in there. Remember it's based on G major scale, so by all means play the G major scale before you approach the piece. Do look very carefully down at from bar 37 right down to bar 44. That is always the bit where people take a stumble. However, if you practice that bit slowly, then that won't happen to you. You've got to get your fingers under those fingering patterns there. So go through it really, really slowly with a fine tooth comb um, and see what you make of it. And I cannot wait to hear your videos for the feedback. Okay, over now. <laughs>